Uh, I'd like to start out by just saying, you know, today was a shorter day. Uh, you know, guys, we had a team meeting at 8, and, you know, guys have just left the building. So uh, no walkthrough this morning uh, prior to practice, uh, which is a little bit different. We went right from meetings and went right to the practice field uh, this morning. So we learned some new concepts, uh, kept installing uh, offense and defense and kicking concepts to our players, uh, which is really good. I thought they picked it up relatively well. Uh, on the field, uh, it's a little bit different because when you don't walk through it, that's the first time running it, you know, for you as a player. So um, you could see that on a couple plays, I thought, today, uh, but that's to be expected. But overall, the guys uh, had great energy. Um, I thought the timing, um, offense and defense was really good. Um, loved the individual work. Uh, we have a ton of individual work. Uh, I spent most of the time down there with the offensive line today. Simo uh, does a great job with those guys and fundamentals and technique, and he's really teaching the drills. And that was really for all the all the coaches this week was to teach the drills. Um, it'll it'll go faster at a faster pace uh, when you come to practice, like during training camp. Uh, the the drills will come off as faster. We went we went quick uh, during during the drills when the guys were going, uh, but. The guys are in more of a teach mode uh, at this time. So it was really good. The players understood the why we're doing this drill. How does it apply to the football game? Um, I think that's uh, an important piece for the guys. Um, and I also talked to them today about our next phase. And, uh, and I thanked them. I thanked them for you know coming here at voluntary mini camp uh, and the energy that they brought. Um, and I think you can start to feel our team starting to form together, just the, the genesis of it. Uh, as we start out this process, and that was really good. And then I talked to him about, like I said, about the you know the the second phase, phase two, uh, coming into this next phase. We have three weeks where we're allowed to meet with the players, but they're on the on the field, you know, you know, strength staff some of that, and also they're on the field with us a little bit to do more drill work. Um, so that's going to be really good for the rudiments of the game for us in terms of the just the fundamentals and techniques of the guys and. Uh, just to understand the why, like I said. So uh, it was good. I thought it was really good, good start, and uh, open up to questions for you guys. You mentioned how you like the energy today. When the offense has a couple up and down moments, how did you like the way that they were able to bounce back and maybe you know put a bad play behind them, especially Justin? Well, it, I think just uh, totally as a as a as a team, that's going to happen. We're going to have ups ups and downs. Uh, the other opponent's going to make plays. Uh, you know, they have players. They 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 have, they're an NFL team too. And we have to learn how to adjust to that during practice. Um, and I talked to him about after after the practice. My main message was this: is that I said, hey, you know, the in vogue term now is growth mindset, right? Everybody says that. Well, what does that mean? That means that I'm going to learn from my performance good, bad, or indifferent, I'm going to take one rep at a time and learn from that. What can I take away from that rep? So as you watch this tape uh, with your coaches and as you watch it, you know, how can I grow and to get better? Even if I, if I throw a touchdown or I make a TFL or I make an interception or, or I get beat over the top for a touchdown, there's learning that takes place in that performance. And we have to do a great job of learning through those performances. That's how you get better. And that's the new term, growth mindset. But uh, uh, that's exactly what it is. With what you just said, were you sensing frustration from from the offense because of some of the misconnections between Justin? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think they took one play at a time, and and they just uh, you know took the play, got the play, got the next play, and then just you know once that play was over, they flushed it and moved to the next one. That's what you have to do. And I thought they did that well. In, in your previous stops, if a defense had had as many takeaways. As it didn't practice today, I imagine you'd be thrilled. Um, and in your new job, how do you balance that with being like, uh, now you got to worry about the offense too? Yeah, I mean, it's it, to me, it's always a positive either way. You know, offense is going to score a bunch of touchdowns against our defense. Uh, you know, during the coming months, and like I said, it's growth mindset. You got to learn from it, and you just got to move forward. Matt, what's the, the biggest challenge for Justin? Inexperienced quarterback hasn't started a lot. Year two, starting from scratch and learning a whole new system. Yeah, I would just say that uh, it's it's the process of it. You know, it's like when you're learning anything new, a new skill, athletic skill or, you know, intellectual skill, you know, you're learning a skill that's a, a skill that's, uh, you know, for everybody. That takes time. And, you know, it's a process. You have to go through that, you know. So, like I said, just learn one day at a time. Uh, with Jalen 
Jordan Johnson out, you had a bunch of young cornerbacks who seemed split between all the positions. What were just your first impressions of that cornerback unit? Yeah, I like it. I thought they're they're quick. Um, like I saw them in the drills yesterday. I was over there with the defense yesterday, and I really liked them. Um, you know, again, there's not a lot of experience there with that group right now, uh, but there's a lot of youngness. You know, the guys are young, they're energetic, uh, they're quick, uh, they're athletic, and, and we're evaluating guys one 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 guy at a time, one day at a time. And uh, we'll have a personnel meeting today at two o'clock, where we'll go and talk with uh, Ryan, his, his staff. And the coaches will be in there, and they'll go through one by one, talk about each guy, how his performance was during the week, and uh, where he sits right now with our football team. Yeah, uh, Eddie, Eddie Jackson showed earlier in his career what he is capable of doing in terms of uh, what this what this defense defensive philosophy is. How key is it going to be for him to be an integral part of that and get back to the what kind of production he had earlier in his career? Yeah, I mean, I think that's it's still there. You know, there's you know you can see the the range and the speed and the athletic ability uh, that's there. I think now it's a uh, guy with that experience. He now it just has to fit himself into our defense. You know, and, and the defense that we're installing, and I say our defense, you know, meaning him included. So I think that um, he's just going to have to do that. You know, he's been in these situations, and when you have experience like that, you've been in situations in a deep part of the field. Which oh yeah, I remember that that happened before to me. So he can utilize that for himself to really enhance the progression of what he wants to get done. By his own admission, he said last year was probably his worst year. How beneficial then is a fresh slate with a new staff and he can kind of start again? Yeah, I think you can see it. I can see it in his, in his attitude and his demeanor. I can see it in his eyes when I talk to him that he is ener energized and he sees this as a fresh start for him. And I could see that in, the, in his practice too. And just the way he's carrying himself, he's been great in the meetings. Uh, and he's been great on the practice field. Matt, with uh, Nick Foles, he's still on your roster. Ryan has said he would like to trade him. What, what's your plan for Nick Foles until something happens? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defer that really to Ryan. I mean, that's going to be Ryan and, and uh, the player, you know, player A or player B. That's, that's going to be on those two guys to talk that through. Um, and I'm leaving that, you know, all, you know, totally to Ryan and his decisions. Would you like to have him practicing? While he's on the roster, or is it irrelevant? Yeah, right now, every on. situation is where it is, uh, Jay, and I would say that, you know, we're just going to leave it at that. I mean, I, I just, you know, let them discuss it, let them figure it out with, you know, agent, player, you know, GM, and we'll go from there. Mooney talked about those sessions that he had in Atlanta with Justin, the throwing sessions and staying with him. As a coach, when you, like, when can you tell how the communication effort and those things are like paying off and that that becomes seamless where if you run this route, this ball, you cross the safety, the ball is going to be on your face. When can you tell like that that's actually clicking? Is there a way to like go from like practice speed to game speed or like a moment for you that you can tell that that's actually paying yeah, off? Yeah, I think you can tell. Um, there will be a moment. I don't know when that's going to be, uh, but you'll be able to see it, the timing and the rhythm and the consistency of it. That's what you'll see. You'll be able to see it. It's, the, it's, it's in rhythm. And you can just see it, and it happens over and over and over again. And that takes time. And that, what they did in Atlanta together, that's great. That's, that was a start. And they got a start, and that's where they are now because of that. They're at a higher spot now because they did that work before. You know, it's just like this offseason. Guys, guys will be at a higher spot, you know, in training camp if we put the work in now. So that's, that's the main goal uh, for everybody in every unit. And you can see that with those guys. Matt, what are you looking forward to for next week? To do, go through the draft in the head coach role. I'm not sure what kind of – are you a stand on the table guy for a prospect you like, or what, what What are you kind of looking forward to in terms of working through that with Ryan and making this? No, plays? it's great. It's great. I go to I go to Getsy and I tell him, hey, we're going to pick six defensive guys. And I go to Allen and say, hey, we're going to pick, uh, you know, six offensive guys. And I keep – I said, man, you better start lobbying. And, uh, <laughs> that's fun. I can play both sides of the fence there. So that's pretty cool. But uh, – There's been a lot of talk about. Roquan and Morrow, Mike, Will, on the surface they have a similar skill set. Do you view them as interchangeable and perhaps would you deploy them that way and does that give you some advantage in terms of disguising what you're doing? I think when you can have interchangeable pieces, I think it's great because you can move them back and forth. Um, and I think that messes with, you know, the other side, you know, in terms of ID points and, you know, different protection points, run points. I think that changes things up. Athletically, I think it's also very important because now you can mix and match who's playing where.
replicate who's covering who um, at times. So I think that's a very important piece if you can have that. Now, many times you don't have that. Many times you have a, a bigger type mic and a more athletic will. You know, that's typically the, the mode that you have. But if you can have guys that can both play both spots, I think it's important. Now, during the course of the year, guys are going to have things that come up. You're not always going to have the two guys in there. So your third guy is as important because he's going to have to come in and play one of those inside spots. You know, now what do you do? Do you move one guy over here? Do you slide a guy over here? So interchangeable is good for a lot of reasons. Would so, you prepare them for that, or would you rather lock them in? Absolutely. Re- we will prepare those guys for that. We have a thing called a pair and a spare. So we got to make sure that you know two spots, and we got another guy that can slide in because if something happens, we're going to put the best lineup in there to help win the football game. So and that could change. That could change, and we've done that before in the past, but that's on the coach and the players to make sure they do that now. You know, in the meetings, they do that, and then in the practice field, they do it. So it's not, oh, I'm not just a, I'm not just a, and that's at every position because we're going to have to flex and move. The rosters are small, and you're going to have to move and flex to be able to win football games. And it seemed like, it seemed like most of the last three days, it seemed like you spent more of your time with the offense. Was that... By design, was there some reasoning why you wanted to do that? I'm just rotating. You know, I started with offense, went defense, and went back to offense. But you know, and I'm really I'm learning. You know, as a head football coach, I'm learning. You know, you as a defense uh, uh, coordinator for all those years, you have ideas, and I have you know a bunch of good friends that mostly offensive line coaches that are really good friends of mine that I've spent a lot of time with. But um, if you uh, see the other side and hear what they're saying. You want to make sure you fully understand. So I will spend a little bit more time there, but today, this week, it was just I just was rotating back offense and defense. We're not going to talk. The other day, talk about sort of like learning new system. It's almost like resetting to his rookie year a little bit. Do you look at it that way? Do you expect some rookie mistakes as you sort of ease into this? Uh, I would just say that you know each guy's working through uh, learning the system. You know, and when you're learning a new system, you're going to have mistakes, and mistakes are good. Mistakes are learning opportunities, so you have to look at it that way at every position. So we want guys to – we're going to push and challenge them and stretch them mentally and physically so they do make mistakes. So why? So we can learn and then grow, and that's what we want to do. Matt, will you guys be on the field next week at all? Will the players just during the draft? I know some teams do, like, light practices, day of the draft. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, We'll be doing some of that, uh, but not during the draft, no.